Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got 11 new things to know in a full review of the new Coros Vertex 2. It's the Vertex 1 on this side, Vertex 2 over here. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the newness of the Vertex 2, but also explain to you all the details of it from an actual usage standpoint over the last month of all my swim, bikes, and runs, uh, just to kind of dive into all the nuances of each of these new features. Now, the first thing to know that's not part of one of those new things is the price, and this one this is going to hurt. It's $6.99, uh, and keep that in mind as we go through all these new things, in particular on some of the gotchas, some of the catches that I'll talk about. Because uh, I think it's really important to understand the context of all these new features as to whether or not they're worth that price tag. So with that, we'll dive right into the very first one, which is mapping or a map layer on the watch itself. Uh, now you can enable this map layer anytime that you're routing. Right now you can't see the maps outside of routing, in other words, outside of having a course loaded into the watch, though Coro says that will probably change down the road. Uh, but the map layer allows three different versions. One is a generic map layer, two is a top map layer or three is a hybrid of the two of those. Uh, I primarily use the hybrid so I can see both the topo data and the map data itself. Uh, and you'll see that again when you're routing. So I've loaded up a course here. Adding a course to the watch is a little bit tricky because it didn't support Komoot or Strava routes or any other routing service. So you have to go ahead and export a GPX or fit file, uh, bring it on your phone, save your phone, save it from the phone into the app. And then once you get all that done, then it's onto the watch. And then you go into the navigation menu or the sport that you want and select that route. Uh, there's a couple of options there primarily around the orientation of the display, whether you want to be heading or north uh, facing. In my case, I chose heading because I want to know kind of where I'm going. Not, I don't really care where north is for the most part. Uh, and then you'll follow this breadcrumb trail. While you're routing, there is no turn by turn direction. So it won't tell you to turn left or right as the trail turns left or right. You just got to sort of watch that breadcrumb trail. Uh, like most breadcrumb systems in the past, uh, that's notable because most other watches these days do actually give you turn by turn uh, directions, even if they don't have maps behind them. Still, the maps are super useful. I've been using it on a ton of trail runs over the last last month. Uh, and it is very, very helpful to be able to see uh, the land, see lakes, see streams and all that kind of goodness. Uh, the one other catch though, is that there is no labels on any of those things. So you won't see trail names or street names or pond names or lake names or anything else, uh, you know, mountaintops, peaks, etc. cetera. Uh, it's just sort of like a blanket green and blue sort of scenario. Still, I think it is super useful to be able to see that from a contextual standpoint. Uh, and it really helps when you're navigating. Now, one cool tidbit there is that Coro says that topo maps in particular will come to the Vertex 1 and the Apex Pro by quote the end of the year. Uh, so if you've got one of those watches, you'll see at least the top of side of those maps uh, hopefully sometime this year. Oh no, hey, a quick note, if you are finding this video interesting or useful, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Next up, Coros has added music support. This is the first wearable of theirs that has music support in it, uh, and it allows you to connect your Bluetooth headphones or any sort of Bluetooth device, even a Bluetooth speaker at the beach or something like that, uh, to the watch itself. And then from there, you can play MP3 files that you loaded onto it. Uh, now you'll load those files using a computer, uh, so not your phone, you have to use a computer to load them on there, and it just accepts MP3 files. Uh, but once loaded on there, you can access the music controls menu from the toolbox, and then you can play and pause, skip tracks, as well as increase the volume. In my experience using it, it works just fine. I had zero disconnects across the board, uh, all that was good. The one obvious downside here is that they won't have any Spotify or Amazon Music or Apple Music, and nothing else will be supported on this watch. Uh, and you know, I talked to Coros about that, and they understand that the limitations there are simply that they're not big enough. It's, it's as simple as that. If Fitbit doesn't have offline Spotify music, then Coros is way down the list of companies to be able to get that. Uh, now Fitbit, of course, does have Spotify control, but not offline Spotify access. And so I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Uh, and unfortunately, that's just sort of going to be the way it is. Oh, now a quick apology. If you're hearing a bunch of banging and slamming, all that kind of stuff uh, going on in the background, that's someone that's decided to re-roof their house like 300 meters away across the lake. Uh, uh, and I've, this is the only time left I have to shoot this video, and so Sorry, um, hopefully it doesn't bug you too much. Next up, Coros becomes the first company to add dual frequency GNSS support uh, to a wearable, as far as I know, any major company wearable anyways. Uh, and that is sort of like the holy grail of GPS accuracy in theory, uh, allowing you to get like down to under a meter of accuracy. I mean, really crazy stuff at, at the price of battery life, but that's fine for the moment. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but the first company to do so. Now, GNSS is basically like the generic term for GPS because GPS is technically like a brand of sorts. Uh, so. The point being here, they have a dual frequency support there, which means access to way more satellites and in theory, way more accurate positioning. Uh, now, as I said, I've been using this for about a month and I have tons of workouts on this uh, to compare against all sorts of other watches on the other wrist, including the Vertex 1 uh, in terrain, you know, from forests like this to uh, rocky mountainsides and all that kind of stuff. And overall, I'd say, meh, meh, like 
it's not that much different. There are, don't get me wrong, there are moments where you're like, damn, it's on the right side of the street. I went around the fountain and went around the fountain too, and it's all like beautiful. There are moments of that, but there's a lot that it's just blah GPS. It's the same as every other device I've tested, all the most current device, you know, Garmin and Polar and Wahoo. It's all like in the same ballpark on a lot of those cases. So I don't see much difference today. Now, over time, they'll probably optimize that and get better. Uh, but in all of my testing, it's again, at best meh. Uh, now, in some cases, it's worse. For example, open water swimming. I've been doing a ton of that lately uh, for video coming up here. And in that case, it scored substantially worse than the Vertex One. I mean, it's been like a dumpster fire in open water swimming on all of my swims. And the cool part is you don't have to like take my word for it. Uh, you can actually click the link down the bottom there and you can see all of my GPS accuracy testing, all of the watches they did. It's all linked down there. Every data set you can look at yourself uh, and decide for yourself how you think those GPS tracks rate. Next up, Coros has added an ECG feature. Now they've called this out in their press release as an ECG feature, as electrocardiogram feature, very similar to the Apple Watch or similar to some of Samsung's watches, uh, but it's not really that. So the way it works is you go ahead and take the other hand and you put it on the bezel of the watch itself uh, and then begin. And then 60 seconds later, over that 60 second time frame, it shows your ECG uh, sine wave right there and you'll see that and you basically can watch your ECG. And now this this juncture, most other companies allow you to export that out uh, or give you some sort of recommendations if there's concern there to go talk to your doctors about that. Uh, but unfortunately, Coros doesn't do any of that. And that's because they haven't gone through the process of a medical device or certifying it as a medical device. Uh, therefore, that's all you get. That's the end of it. That's that's literally all you see is that little screensaver, unfortunately. Uh, now, what that does do instead, though, is get you to the next feature, which is the HRV feature. Uh, so at the end of that ECG test, you don't get ECG stuff, you get an HRV value. Uh, and that HRV value is something that's then saved to the Coros app on a scale of uh, 0 to 100, 100 essentially being more recovered. Uh, and then in theory, you can track that over time. Next up on the list is a new optical heart rate sensor. Uh, this came with kind of the whole package of ECG stuff and HRV stuff. Uh, uh, and in my testing, just to cut right to it here, not any more accurate, in some cases less accurate, uh, unfortunately. So again, you can see all those data sets down the bottom there, but I saw plenty of cases where it was just off in left field. Uh, it wasn't like horrifically off uh, most of the time, but it was definitely off more than the other units were off across all of my testing sets. Okay, so coming in at number seven on the list, they've added Insta360 camera control. So if you have an Insta360 action cam, in particular, the X2, the 1R, or the Go2, uh, you can go ahead and control that with your watch itself. You better go into the toolbox, pair it up with the camera, essentially as a Bluetooth uh, remote control for the Insta360 camera, uh, and then control it from just your watch itself. And now just a quick note that while the Insta360 Go2 is currently on the list of compatible cameras, it doesn't actually work quite yet. I confirmed that with Coros. Uh, they say it's coming soon, uh, but it's not quite there today. So you have to use either the 1R or the 1X2 instead. Now, by now you may be wondering with all these new features, has Coros decreased their battery life? They've been known for the battery life since the beginning. Uh, and the answer is no, they've actually increased it. Uh, so I gotta grab my phone out of the tree here uh, to run through these numbers. So up to 140 hours in regular GPS mode, up to 240 hours in the reduced ultra tracking mode. And then there's up to 60 days in daily tracking mode. Uh, and then if you have the dual frequency GPS, that's the really high end GPS, if you will, uh, then it's up to 50 hours. So that's kind of like in line with most other watches these days, if you were to have the regular modes compared to Coros's dual frequency mode. Uh, and I'll put the rest of them on the screen right now for different modes and music modes and stuff like that. I mean, at the end of the day, it's battery life is super impressive here. Uh, in my testing, I'd say these numbers seem plausible. Uh, it's really hard to like track battery life exactly because I'm, you know, obviously doing lots of workouts at the same time that I'm using it 24 by seven. Uh, so it just as a kind of a data point for fun, uh, I went like about two and a half weeks without charging it with daily workouts of one to three hours of GPS, uh, all in dual frequency mode. Uh, and then just, you know, 24 by seven usage as well. Uh, so, and some of those had music as well, though not many of them, but a few of them did have music. And then by the end of that two and a half weeks, I, I was down to the teens percentage wise and recharged it from there. So I'm thinking battery life is, is pretty solid overall. Okay, so next while I put this back up the tree, there is a new revamped uh, user interface. And it's minor in some cases, I can't get that back in the tree. It's it's really hard to do that. Now it's not like a major revamp across the board. It's mostly confined to one area, which is the widgets. In particular, they took them from widgets to widget glances. I mean, they, they completely 100% exactly duplicated uh, Garmin's widget glances feature uh, down to like, the, and every little bit of it's identical. Uh, and that's to be 
be fair, kind of in Koros's way over time, and we see that coming back here with widget glances. Still, that aside, it does work really well. Like, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You can scroll down with the dial that Koros has. Uh, it arguably works better in some cases because uh, you have the dial, and I don't like the dial for almost every other part of the watch, but for the widget glances, I kind of like the dial. It's the one time you'll ever hear me say that about the Coro style. Within your widget glances, you can see all the different stats, everything from how much you uh, worked out that day, to steps, to stairs, to sleep, uh, to uh, barometric pressure, to altitude, uh, all that's in there. Uh, and you can go into each one of those, or a lot of them anyways, uh, and get more information about that particular metric. Okay, we're coming to the home stretch here. We have two more things. Uh, one is a quick spec thing. Uh, first of all, it's a larger screen, 1.4 inches now compared to 1.2 inches in the past. That means they increase the pixels. Uh, from 240 by 240 to 280 by 280. Uh, still a color, full color screen there, still a touch screen. Uh, particularly, you see that touch in the mapping section where you can use your finger to move the map around a little bit. Uh, so that's kind of handy. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do that than on some of Garmin's watches. And then Cora says they also increased the processor power by 20%. Uh, this feels fine, except for the mapping. That's one area when you use that touch screen to move it around, you can see that it's a little bit laggy and slow there. Not a huge deal. It's certainly less laggy than uh, Garmin's maps when you move them around. Uh, but not as fast as something like the Hammerhead Crew uh, bike GPSs that are basically built on an Android phone. Those are those are super fast. Also, from a material standpoint, the entire uh, bezel is titanium alloy, as is the back of the case. Uh, the whole thing is basically that, except for uh, the wrist strap itself. So that gets to the last one, and this one is not a good new thing. It's a bad thing. It's been removed. It's gone. So it's an undo thing, uh, which is they've removed AMP+. Plus. And now, for you trail runners out there and rock climbers and all that kind of stuff, you're like, don't care. And that's totally fine. But for you cyclists and triathletes, this could be a pretty big deal. Uh, so this means that there's no longer AMP+, Plus in the watch itself. They had it in all their previous watches. Coral says that was a horror decision they made, uh, and I'm really surprised they did that. And the reason is that the power meter side of cycling in particular, a lot of people still have power meters that are AMP+, Plus, and more importantly, Every smart trainer out there, except the Wahoo ones, only transmits one Bluetooth smart signal on it. Uh, so that means that as part of that, if you wanted to pair your smart trainer to Zwift, you can't then pair also to your watch um, over Bluetooth smart. You have to use AMP Plus. Uh, and again, the watch doesn't support AMP Plus, so you're probably out of luck there. And that was something that I ran into on my very first ride with it. Uh, the very first workout I did, in fact, was indoors, and I realized I can't pair to my trainer anymore to get the data I wanted there to get the training load data and all that kind of stuff to be more accurate. Uh, so that's a, a huge bummer for triathletes and cyclists uh, and hopefully something Coros reconsiders for future hardware versions. Obviously it's that ship has sailed for this one. There is no Amplus hardware in this, uh, but maybe down the road they'll consider changing that or something like that. Okay, there you go. A full review of the new Coros Vertex 2. Overall, as I said, I'm really impressed with their ability to add all these new features. I think like adding in music and adding in the dual GPS side of it, dual frequency GPS, all that is super cool. I'd like to see them stepping forward like that. Uh, the problem is that each of those features, or every single one of those features, has caveats to them. And some of them are little caveats, and some of them are pretty substantial caveats. And when you combine that with the price of $699 US dollars, the same price as a Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro, which has music and streaming services and way more detailed maps and all these sort of features, it's really hard to compare those two. It's really hard to see how you get to $699 uh, for the Vertex 2. I get that it has a dual frequency GPS, and I get that could be appealing, but as I showed in my testing today, it's it's not. It's just kind of the same as everyone else. And given it's the same as everyone else, then you start to compare on that same field. And that makes this watch much tougher to recommend at this price point. I think if it was priced at $499, which is $2 less than what they're doing now, and I know that like a pain probably went through people at Coros' stomach when I said that, but that is the appropriate price for this watch given the feature set it has. Uh, and I don't make up the rules. Those are just the <laughs> rules of the, the marketplace and the comp competitors right now. Uh, that's the right price point for this watch given the features it has and given the caveats that it has. Uh, but if it did that, and if they continue to improve the firmware uh, and kind of close out some of those caveats, then that makes it a really strong buy at 499 in the same way that their Pace 2 watch, the Coros Pace 2, is an incredible buy down at 199 That's like the watch to buy at that price bucket or anywhere near that price bucket. Uh, and I think the same could be said if Coros were reduce that price and recognize the value they could have at 499 as opposed to trying to compete with watches they can't compete at at 699 Anyways, with that, hope you found this interesting and useful. If so, consider whacking that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.